Have you ever wondered how long it takes to register as a professional engineer? Well, my name is Johan van Skolpijk and let me explain this to you briefly. First and foremost, the Engineering Council of South Africa has documented the rules for registration which includes the candidates. Effectively, it means that according to EXA's rules, you have to register as a candidate engineer straight after your qualification. Not a prerequisite, but it's advisable. You can, however, not register as a candidate, gain enough engineering experience and operate on the le right level without being registered as a candidate and still register as a professional. So it can be done. It's not a prerequisite. So remember that. Now, how long does it take? It takes, according to EXA, as I said, three years. That's a minimum requirement. You need to get a minimum of three years experience before you can register as a professional. However, this is where it gets interesting. According to the information that we have, it takes an average about five to five and a half years to register as a professional. But you might wonder why. And the reason for that is due to the fact that the candidates don't get enough exposure in the built environment to cover all the living outcomes and to progressively move through the various um, levels of competency. Now, if you start looking at the levels of competency and you start looking at the living outcomes and you look at the broad experience that the candidate must get, then you'll start understanding why it takes five to five and a half years um, and sometimes even longer to register as a professional. So your, your first one is you need to progressively move through the various stages. And by progression, we mean the following. Number one, when you start out as a candidate, after you've gained your qualification, you're being exposed to the environment. So you observe, you see what's going on. You don't take any responsibility whatsoever. Then you move to B, which is assisting. So you take limited responsibility and you start outputting some of your activities. You're performing under close supervision of, with a mentor or a supervisor. Then you move to C, which is participating. This is where you actively start participating in the, in the projects. You have limited su supervision during this stage and you take more and more responsibility and you get supervised less and less. Then you have the D one, which is contributing. This is where you fully contribute to the various projects. Um, you take full responsibility for your actions. Your supervisor or your mentor looks at the quality of your output. And from this phase, you move on to number E, which is performing. Now, performing is an interesting one. You need to operate on level E for at least a year before you can register as a professional. That is basically operating at the same level, doing the same as a professionally registered person. However, you cannot sign off yet. You need to then apply and go through that whole application process. All of these various stages are linked to an average of time spent on them. As an example, level A and level B, being exposed and assisting, takes anything from 6 to 12 months. And then C and D, depending on which level you are, and then operating at level E, at least a year. So if you start adding that up, you get more or less to three years. But as I said, some of that takes longer. Then you've got, during that period, also the 11 outcomes that you need to cover. And if you haven't covered all of them sufficiently, then you won't be able to register as a professional. And that puts a little bit more, shall we call it, onus on the time that you're going to spend becoming a professional. So in conclusion, you need to make sure that you get the enough experience during this period of time that you can register as a professional. So that progression from A to E is imperative, but you can't fast track it. 10 years experience takes 10 years. 
Number two, during that time, you need to ensure that you get exposure, a broad-based exposure to all of those 11 outcomes. And number three, you and your mentor and your supervisor needs to check that you cover the outcomes on the right level and that you deem competent in all of them. That's in a nutshell how to do it. If you want to find out more, you can go to my website. There's a whole program on the 11 outcomes and a lot more.